series of visions and reflections, our ISAP conversation series. And today we welcome Matthias Ottesson, therapist and hypnotherapist living in Ostersund, Sweden. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> and we're going to speak about psychodynamics. You've been studying for how many years at, um, online with the EIPA now? Um, for one year now. Uh, I'm uh, beginning the second year in the, somewhere around September, I think. And at the same time, you were doing a online analysis. Yes. How is that working out? I think it works out well. I I, I like um, the uh, moving forwardness <laughs> of yeah. ISAP uh, because I, it's in, in some regards I think that maybe uh, IPA and, and uh, are a little bit behind when it comes to the technical uh, part of, of things. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think really that uh, it, it works well and uh, and it, it's uh, uh, reassuring and, and um, nice to know that the training is uh, is conducted in in uh, a classical way with uh, these mm -hmm. theoretical seminars and uh, and uh, uh, training analysis and then later on sub supervised uh, cases so it's uh, it's it's uh, still uh, the, the classical approach, but it's online in a more modern way, and I I really like that. Right now, uh, is that available in, in Sweden? Have you found that in other parts of the world? I mean, why did you go to France to to ISAP? Two reasons uh, mainly. It, it was mm -hmm. um, I wanted to find some online. Uh, type of uh, psychoanalytic uh, training even mm -hmm. if it was just uh, some basic uh, theory um, because I, I've always been so interested in in the, the in psychoanalysis and psychodynamics mm -hmm. so uh, but but then it, it was also because I like the I guess you could say the French branch of um, how do you say it? Um, I, I like the French uh, psychoanalysts. I've mm -hmm. read um, uh, a lot of uh, Lacan before I, I moved on. I, I had a very um, um, strange relationship to Lacan, but <laughs> it's for another time. <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, so it was those two reasons because I like the the French uh, branch of of uh, psychoanalysis and uh, because yeah. I was looking for something online and yeah. I was surprised to find that it's a five year <laughs> education program right. it's, uh, on the yeah. online. Yeah. The um, theories that you have learned in the first year might be changing your vision of your work as a therapist and a hypnotherapist. Yes, um, I was actually trained as a hypnoanalyst before I started at, at ISAP, but it's, it's this uh, early method that Freud and, and uh, Breuer used uh, before psychoanalysis, really. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I read it um, for uh, a guy in in uh, England, Neil French, yeah. and um, uh, so so I had some uh, theory, and I was interested myself. So I have read some some of um, uh, Freud's uh, essays and and things like yeah. that. Um, so so I had this um, this Freudian uh, dr drive. Um, that that kind of of Freudian knowledge, right? So you had the basis. Yes, and and uh, this mm -hmm. it was uh, strictly Freudian. It was like character analysis and drives and 
uh-huh. and and so so it, it was uh, um, what really changed uh, when I started at ISAP was that I I realized that that uh, psychoanalysis is really somewhere else today, but at the same time not. <laughs> it's it's like uh, um, more advanced uh, versions of Freud's ideas. Um, and today we're not uh, to- uh, necessarily talking about when we're talking about uh, penis and we, for instance, we're not uh, talking of um, the organ. Uh, we we're talking about the, the phallus as um, um, a concept, a symbol. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that was uh, for me. Okay. Yeah. So I had sort of a, a basic. Uh, I had I had a psychoanalytic um, type of therapy because okay. I'm I'm a Gestalt therapist in um, before I, I studied to become a hypnotherapist. So. Right. And um, Fritz Perls, who, who uh, sort of invented Gestalt therapy, he he was. Uh, a psycho- psychoanalyst. Um, I was wondering how and you're also a hypnotherapist now. Um, you had said once that you do almost mostly hypnotherapy at this moment. Yes. Is that right? And um, how does the, the, the theories of the unconscious, the conscious, and the subconscious work uh, in your hypnotherapy sessions? Well, I, I've been um sort of it it has affected it well like i t- i can take an example it, it's easier right. if if uh, somebody comes to me with some sort of eating disorder mm-hmm. um then if i if i go against the ple- pleasure principle uh, it it will uh, <laughs> it will backfire so i i need to to um, uh, phrase my my suggestions in a way that I can lure the, the uh, okay. pleasure principle to another direction. Okay. So so um, um, say if if you're dealing with someone who who wants to lose weight, um, mm-hmm. you, I, I changed my I changed my suggestion to. Uh, put more emphasis on uh, that you will enjoy this other thing so much that you will no longer feel the need to and this will be so pleasurable for you and so I, I <clears throat> in in that way I've uh, it's, it's been affecting my hypnotherapy I see it as if if uh, the, the pres- uh, pleasure principle has uh, in an unconscious way, uh, yeah. latched on to one thing that is, uh, <laughs> and then I, I try to make this uh, connection move to something Thank that's you. a little bit healthier. Yeah. So, so I'm 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 sort of moving the 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 symptom neurosis, but <laughs> it's it's uh, yeah. uh, it's uh, symptom therapy when i yeah. some some people come to me and and just want to have help with their smoking and and mm-hmm. i i won't force them i i, I will not force them to <laughs> to uh, go into analytic yeah. hypnotherapy if they don't want to okay. so sometimes okay. I, I i i remove phobias although i know that this will probably cause this energy to go somewhere else but yeah. it's it's what uh, what they want so it has to continue the energy maybe it's blocked in one stage and so it has to advance yeah you know, the libido could be blocked in one of the stages before the oedipus complex yeah um, and then to de-block it and also help the patient to advance so this fixation or dependency on either, as you said, the eating or the smoking yeah. can be released and 
yeah, substitute it on something else which is more acceptable, you know, to the person and healthier. Yeah. Do you have a lot of patients who come for dependencies and addictions at this moment? Um, it was a little bit more in the beginning, but now it's it's more. Um, I seem to get more, more and more um, uh, clients with the, with a neurotic uh, personality oh. uh, organization. It's not uh, in the early in my early days. It was more borderline. Um, okay. And I've I had some uh, one client that was in the psychotic um, mm-hmm. organization, and that was very interesting in in regards to um, counter transfer transference. I was so confused, but um, um, nowadays it seems like it's neurosis um, relationship uh, problems and uh, this. Uh, basic inner conflicts. I want to do this, but this uh, feeling is uh, in the way and and I'm feeling an- anxiety. It's the that kind of scenarios. Can you attribute like the wave of different patients with neuroses and dependencies or um, to something in the world that's happening? Is it because of our the virus situation right now, do you think? Is it just that I, I think it's it's um, we had had a, a period here in, in Sweden where where we had some um, isolation recommendations from the government and yeah. and during that time uh, I think that a lot of people uh, realized that <laughs> they had a lot more problems than they they realized in the beginning because yeah. uh, they had they didn't have access to their projections and and mis- displacements and, and this. so, so uh, it, it became problems in 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 the home instead and mm-hmm. so I've had so, some clients uh, uh, now um, that has uh, been uh, in the, that kind of situation, but completely mm-hmm. functional in in uh, in normal uh, in their their normal condition in in when the society is opened. And, uh, mm-hmm. But uh, when these things are not available to them, it, the pressure uh, becomes too much. The, the psychological pressure. Mm-hmm. So then they look to you for hypnotherapy or therapy? Yeah, it's it's mostly in it's almost in desperation sometimes because they they come to me and, and they think that I am if I just because I'm a hypnotherapist I can reprogram their brain and then yeah. it's it's like a, um, if if you're removing your appendix or <laughs> or something it's. Yeah. Uh, but but I when I explain that this is it's not um, and it will uh, probably take some time, then um, initially they become a little bit disappointed. And but uh, I have uh, a couple of of clients who has started uh, analytical um, hypnotherapy yeah. because yeah. of of this uh, Corona situation. Right, exactly. I was wondering about the psychodynamics in, in your parenting. Um, how does that influence your thinking? I had a lot more ideas about um, uh, parenting and and um, things like that before mm-hmm. I, I started reading, um, for instance, Winnicott or Bion. So uh, today I'm uh, I'm trying to just be the the container, <laughs> right. yeah. so uh, and the, the good enough parent. I try to give my child as, as much love as possible and mm-hmm. have have faith in that that um, she will have a a, a normal development um, because of that. Yeah, and um, something that made me do a lot of reflection on my own situation was as I was doing my didactic, you know, my analytical didactic 
with my studies. Yeah. It made me reflect about my childhood. Um, and it took me right back to so many different stages. Um, and then I also thought about my parenting. So it was like a parallel journey at the same time for me. Yeah. I don't know if you can relate to that. <laughs> yeah, I can. And, and it's been healing for, for, for myself as yeah. well. When, mm. I, when I comfort my, my child, it, it feels like I'm uh, comforting my inner child as well. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can I can relate to this. Uh, uh, I see myself. She's she's very. Uh, she looks like me. So, <laughs> so she. Yeah, I, I, easier too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm reminded, and and um, it's been healing for me. It's. Uh, um, and um, also the natural process of. Um, you know, the mother being the first, uh, you know, we say, love object. Yeah, she has been feeling some um, ag aggressive th uh, feelings sometimes okay. uh, yeah. towards uh, our child, and I've been, I've been able to to tell her that that this is completely normal. It's it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's I know that you won't throw our child out of the window because right. because you f just because you feel these impulses. Mm -hmm. It's uh, if there is love towards the child, there will be hate as well. It's right. just the way it is. Uh, this was actually um, Delphine's words. She in in one of her sessions she said just that that if there is love, there must be hate as well. And that was so was really powerful and uh, liberating for for me as well. Um, I've I've sort of um, um, understood it on my own when I was reading, uh, but uh, it was so it was another another experience to hear it from someone else. Um, and I have another question in Sweden. What is the sort of a public opinion of analysis or psychoanalysis? Well, that that is a sad chapter. <laughs> oh, okay. We we um, Sweden uh, in in the public healthcare system, it's it's almost uh, only CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's it's being more and more um, phased out uh, the psychoanalytic, uh, oh, really? mm -hmm. and that's, that's that is a very sad part of <laughs> of Sweden. But um, I can see uh, some of it um, is really enthusiastic about this and and wants to spread um, the the psychodynamic uh, perspective, and mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully it will. Stabilized. It looks like you were also, as the pendulum is is going, you know, from left to right, that you were also going towards more psychodynamics in your work, in your life. Yeah. And, um, and I suppose you work with other people too. I um, I invited uh, uh, this um, cognitive behavioral therapist. To to work there with me because yeah. because I, I I I do not I'm I'm not against CBT in in any way I uh, I think that we we need both um, but it is it's it's this uh, yeah, I, I agree with you yeah I agree with you absolutely yeah. and this it's this schizoid uh, <laughs> split that yeah. that it has to be. Uh, either one or the other that's uh, that's the the part that's wrong we we need to to um, step into the, the depressive <laughs> reparative <clears throat> gray zone and i think i will even if uh, in in the future when i'm uh, a fully trained uh, psychoanalyst i think i, I will i won't uh, abandon the gestalt uh, some of the, those uh, techniques, uh, 
Okay. It's because it's it's this uh, emphasis on on the body and uh, the sensations, this phenomenological yeah. um, um, approach. It's it's so use it's so useful. Right. Yeah. And I, I assume that um, you use uh, uh, this in um, eye movement therapy as well. Yeah, we don't use body work, but we there is the um, the tactile part where you're touching your hands. Yeah, you know the the, ther- the training that you've had in the past. You know, so, you know the empty chair technique and and this uh, it's it's powerful stuff, mm-hmm. uh, especially when you when you're working with neurotic uh, clients. That that's mm-hmm. sort of the 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 reason why I I moved to psychoanalysis from gestalt therapy because it's really um, most effective for for uh, neurotic organized uh, people Um, it's not um, it's not that effective in the borderline and psychosis uh, psychotic organization because uh, and then it, it I think that because gestalt therapy is is sort of a humanistic uh, existential um, kind of therapy, uh, where you the the you you <clears throat> let the client do the interpretations of uh, the dream and 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 um, it's this this approach that every every uh, interpretation that is done by the therapist is a mistake. It's like Mm-hmm. Um, and it is th- that strict uh, humanistic. Uh, I came to realize for myself that some some of uh, of our uh, inner conflicts and are way too hidden for us to to be. We need some somebody else to interpret and and uh, because we it's we are completely blind to it and it it doesn't matter if we if we work with with the body and the body sensations and sensations that uh, doesn't have a name and or or uh, feelings from a memory that doesn't have uh, the pictures or the visual part it 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 doesn't matter what we do uh, because the the psychoanalytic um interpretation and 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 um, the psycho psychoanalysts role in the in the analysis uh, it's it's it will never be uh, like that in gestalt therapy of course we have this issue called uh, resistance <laughs> that of we course. have to, uh, and and i i have actually scared away a couple of clients because I told them stuff that they may well, were not ready to hear. So yeah. mm. it um, uh, so so. It, it, but that that's something that I've come to learn in um, in later maybe the latest two years and also in the ISAP pro- mm. training program that that I really need to have. Uh, a lot more. Um, um, how do you say it? In, in German, it's fingerspitzgefühle, but it's. Oh. <laughs> hmm, that means. Um, you you have to be delicate. You have to yeah. to feel uh, in the situation and and. Uh, Silent communication many times. Yeah, exactly, mm. and and I, it's. Um, I look at at this uh, uh, process uh, almost like a dance. It's it's um, it's a dance with the the, the resistance and the transference and counter transference, and um, and it's it's a journey with every client. It's and 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 that is it's something that I I really really like with with the psychoanalytic um, uh, uh, bra- branch of, because we have the psychodynamic psychotherapy, who's, mm-hmm. uh, it's, 
it's this uh, affective focused uh, psychodynamic short term therapy or something like that mm-hmm. and they they don't talk about counter transference it's not a concept that is uh, um, i asked uh, a psychodynamic uh, therapist who worked in the public uh, healthcare um, facility that was nearest to me in my town and I asked her if if they they worked with uh, with transference neurosis and things like that and then she said well we 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 are not allowed to work uh, psychoanalytically so uh, so, um, but that is something that I really like about the, the this um, type of, of uh, the therapy because it's nothing to be ashamed about your countertransference. It's that's also completely normal. We have the subjective countertransference, which is uh, we we just have to to deal with it because it's. We, we we won't be able to help our clients if we if we can't if we can't uh, deal with it and be honest uh, um, at least to ourselves about what we're thinking about this client. Well, um, do you have any other anything else you'd like to add into the interview? Oh, I, I don't know really. I've. I'm um, just starting to accept uh, international clients. Um, oh. Online? Yes. So, uh, I started with this online, uh, uh, more online therapy when this Corona uh, uh-huh. virus came, and and then it 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 hit me that maybe I could uh, accept uh, clients from all over the world. So. Okay. I'm um, I'm um, editing my my website now to to have okay. this um, English um, language choice. Um, okay. So, so are you able to do hypnotherapy online? Yeah. Well, that's great. It's good that you're going online. That we are online, able to communicate today, and that um, you're doing your your courses. And your own analysis online. Yeah. So that is really, you know, it's all working now for all of us all over the world, we're connecting. Yeah, and, and I, I, it feels good to be part of this uh, movement, if you can call it that, because yeah. because we really need to be. I, I think we need to be become. It needs to become more. Uh, psychoanalysts and psychoanalytic therapists in the world. Um, I think that there's a, a big interest, but it's the way to to become a psychoanalyst is it's too complicated for most people. Uh, and this is a, a more um, available way to to uh, read and, and study this. Uh, so it's. I really believe in what what ISAP is doing. Okay. Yeah, I do too. So, um, okay, well, I think we're going to finish there. Um, thanks so much, Matthias, for all of your thoughts today. And uh, reflections. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Well, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Goodbye.